prepared. Topic is calorimetry. So it's our first method that we are going to learn to figure out just how much energy is associated with reaction. So in previous problems, we've been given the, the delta H for reactions and asked to do all kinds of mathematical manipulations. But how do we find it? How do we find delta H? Well, there's three different ways we're going to do it. And the first one is an experimental method, and it's called calorimetry. Okay, so calorimetry is the science of measuring the heat that is associated with a reaction, and it's based on temperature changes. And in order to do that, we've got to understand this idea of specific heat capacity. So specific heat capacity is the energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Um, every substance has its own unique specific heat capacity. Um, and so depending on many things with that substance, uh, it takes different amounts of energy to raise the temperature of the substance. So, our units for specific heat capacity are joules, joules per gram degree Celsius. Those are our units. So the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Utilizing that idea, we can figure out how much heat is associated with the reaction. So the formula that we'll use to do that is Q equals MC delta T. Okay, so M is the mass of the solution. C is the specific heat capacity of the solution. What do you think delta T is? Delta T is the change in temperature. So before and after the reaction. And then Q. Q is the energy. And what Q is, is Q is the absolute value of delta H. Meaning that we're all, this, this number is always going to be, Q is always going to be a positive number. Okay, because we're going to measure the change in temperature in an absolute value kind of way. And then what we have to do is we have to say to ourselves, did the temperature go up or did the temperature go down? So we'll get a value for Q, and then we have to say, okay, if the temperature went up, that means that the thing is exothermic. We're going to add a negative sign to Q, and that will be your delta H. If the temperature went down, that means it was endothermic. Energy was absorbed. Our value of Q is um, always going to be positive, but we know if the temperature went down, then that delta H is going to stay positive, right? When we interpret that as a delta H, it's going to stay positive. Okay, so that's our formula. Let's look at a problem. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can do calorimetry problems. Okay, so if I was you, 
I would pause right now and um, copy that problem. It's a long one. So there's a couple of things we need for this. The first thing that we need is we need to know that the heat capacity, so, and it, this has to be given in the problem, the heat capacity for the solution is 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius, which is actually the heat capacity of water. So it's not, the heat capacity is essentially going to be the heat capacity of water. And um, the density of the final solution is again that of water, which is 1.0 grams per mil. All right, so to do this problem, you guys, the first thing we need to do is we need to, um, let's, do a, let's do a balanced equation. We're making some barium nitrate, well, we're combining barium nitrate plus sodium sulfate. And we are going to make some barium sulfate. And we are going to make some sodium nitrate. And that's going to be two. All right, so what we're trying to figure out here is how much heat, what is the delta H of this reaction? That's what we are trying to do based on the information that's given. So we're pouring these two things together in a calorimeter, which in this case is probably just going to be an insulated styrofoam cup. And we are um, looking at this temperature change, and based on this temperature change and this information, we can find the delta H for this reaction. Okay, so we will use Q equals MC delta T. Q equals MC delta T. So the first thing we want to figure out is mass. Okay, they gave us the density of the solution, and that's what we're going to use. So our, our solution was 1.0 grams per milliliter. And how much solution did we have? Well, we mixed together 1 liter and 1 liter, so we have a total of 2 liters of solution. So we've got 2.00 liters. Okay, but those aren't going to cancel liters and milliliters, so we're going to say we have 1,000 mils for every liter. Right? Liters, mils, great. We've got grams, which is our mass, and that is 2.00 times 10 to the third grams. So there's our mass. <clears throat> RC is 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius. That's given in the problem. And our delta T is 28, the difference between the final and the initial, and we're just looking for an absolute value here, is 3.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're going to take one, two, three. We're going to take those three and we are going to plug it in so that we end up getting Q equal to 2.0 times 10 to the third grams. And you'll see why I'm doing it this way. Times. Um, heat capacity is here, 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Okay, this isn't a stoichiometry problem, people. I just want you to see how the units are canceling. And last but not least, our delta T 
is 3.1 degrees Celsius, right? So Q equals MC delta T. So our joules are left, right? These cancel, this cancels, and this leaves me with 2.6 times 10 to the fourth joules. That's Q. That's not delta H. So what we need to do now, so Q equals 2.6 times 10 to the fourth joules. Keeping in mind that Q is the absolute value of delta H. So what we have to do is we have to look at the temperature. And we have to say, well, what happened to the temperature? Did it go up or did it go down? Well, it started at 25 and it ended at 28.1. So delta T is positive, right? The change in temperature, it went up. So this thing is exothermic. So what is our sign of delta H? Our sign of delta H is negative. So delta H is equal to negative 2.6 times 10 to the fourth joules. Or we could say negative 26 kJ per every one mole of barium sulfate formed.